and and also we know the power of sound uh, through cymatics to impact not just the brain and and so forth and consciousness, but also impact every cell of our body. And you know, with these proper tuning scales and words of power and empowerment, you're using cymatics in a really positive and conscious way. Uh, so, do you want to share a little bit more about your um, thoughts on cymatics and how that uh, plays in here? Because it can be used for better or for worse, correct? Oh, cymatic frequency are, are, are totally, they run the entire universe. As a matter of fact, when you're listening to somebody speak, the way that we think we hear somebody is not actually the way we hear somebody. What's happening is a cymatic frequency is coming out of their vocal cords and it's riding over the gases, the atmospheric gases, until it hits the cochlea in your ear and it's translated by the brain into actual verbiage. And what's interesting is it doesn't really matter what language you speak. It's all based on the conscious intent that is in that is then piggybacked on top of that frequency. Mm -hmm. And they actually sync together and it rides the wave into your mind and then your mind translates it. But it also absorbs the conscious intent, whether you know it or realize it or not. And that's why cymatic frequencies are so important. Uh, in music and speaking and TV and everything else that you're listening to and even speaking to somebody, somebody speaking to you, because all that's absorbed by the body, it's all transcoded by the brain and your cells absorb all of it and they remember everything. Your DNA remembers everything. And so cymatics are really, really key because depending on the intent behind the cymatic frequency, it can actually have a bad effect. It can create dis-ease in the body or a disease. It can also create positivity, upliftment, enlightenment, happiness, joy, and love. So the cymatics are really important. And cymatics, we know, as above, so below, on a galactic scale or a universal scale, we can see the effect of the cymatic frequencies that actually jingle life into uh, or the illusion of matter into existence here before our eyes. For example, like uh, the spots on the back of a leopard. That's a pattern based on the frequency rippling through space time that have created those spots or the pattern on the back of a turtle. You know, that pattern is evidence of somatic frequencies. And so we know this now by doing our own experiments with plates and speakers and putting different types of uh, material on the plate and creating vibrations in the plate. We can see different shapes and forms, different geometrical structures create. We know that that is the uh, like it says in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God, but that what it's really saying is in the beginning was a frequency and that frequency became the creator. That is what God is. So in my opinion, God, the face of God is not the face of a man or anybody flying through around with a robe on. But to me, the face of God is actually uh, the flower of life. And I believe that that frequency that emanates through the vesica pistis that's encoded into the flower of life is the frequency that has gone out and cymatically help to create our whole uh, reality here on this, on this, not only this planet, but the entire universe. Wow. So you just really talked there about what is ultimately the essence of magic yeah. is you know, <laughs> that we're <laughs> combining the intent, mm -hmm. which is then expressed through the voice, through yeah. words of power um, and at particular frequencies that then that sound, as it carries that intent and the meaning of the word, it then can literally sound can shape the physical world. Sound shapes matter. And that is what the original study of cymatics was, is that how sound can, can mold and shape and create these sacred geometric patterns and what look like mandalas within yeah. the materia, whether it's water or clay or sand, and it literally forms it. Yeah. Um, and so this is this, you know, from the intent to the spoken word mm -hmm. to the material manifestation and, yeah. and how we direct it with our, our will and our, our actions and so forth. I mean, that is really the essence of, of magic. And yeah. hopefully, as you're saying that, that, you know, people often think that, that the words are, you know, just carrying their meaning, but they're not thinking about the intent behind the words. And right. yet, when you're talking to somebody, you can feel when there's an incongruence between <laughs> their words and yeah. some other energy that's being sent from them. 
Yeah. And that energy is the thoughts or the ego or whatever, you know, whether it's positive or negative, you mm -hmm. feel that. And, and we, we, you know, intuitively pick up on when there's an incongruence between yeah. somebody's, um, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes with them and what they're saying. One final thing that I want to talk about, and that is, you know, all ultimately again, towards what do we need to shift mm -hmm. if there is something really key? And I think you kind of said it um, in a way we, we started with it, with the topic of abundance. And mm -hmm. then you also mentioned when it comes to the youth and, you know, dressing nice, for example, and having nice things. And, you know, that might appeal to them as a lifestyle, but there's something deeper underneath that. There is a lifting out of mediocrity into, you know, like a sense of what we could call it royalty into a sense of like, I'm really embodying my mastery in this world. And that gives an example for them to aspire to. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest issues that we've really had in this, uh, in, in our modern age is we're, we're almost devolving into more and more mediocrity setting in within yeah. the matrix mindset. Yeah. And that mediocrity, I think, also plays in with the victimhood mindset. Mm -hmm. Like the, these two things seem to be going hand in hand. There's more people who are, um, you know, trying to create causes around supporting the victim yeah. um, or, you know, being the victim. And then mm -hmm. they get more attention for it. And then they get maybe more money for it. And mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then, you know, the, the more we're a victim, well, the more we have to fall into that, you know, kind of mediocrity state because yeah. we're a victim versus being an empowered and abundant person. Mm -hmm. Um, so this victimhood mindset, what would you say is the biggest way to help people shift out mm -hmm. of that victimhood mindset? Because in order to create that new world, we're going to have to really step into our power. We have to. We have to teach people how to step into their power. That's the biggest thing. We have to teach people that they are all powerful, that they are uh, their savior that they've been waiting for, and that accepting the current condition and situation and just being in collusion with it means that uh, they're becoming the victim, and they're also the they're, they're they they become the prisoner and the prison guard, <laughs> you know, and which is weird because they don't realize that. They got themselves, they've accepted this, this level. And then if somebody even that they know or they even themselves tries to break past that level, they self-sabotage or they sabotage someone else subconsciously. Mm -hmm. And making somebody aware of that. See, the biggest problem that we have is bringing awareness to these kind of situations. And there's got to be a specialized technique to bring an awareness to these situations. Otherwise, you can offend somebody. And people get very offensive <laughs> these days. So it's got to be done in a very, very nice way, a loving way, in a way where you're giving an example and showing and teaching versus uh, talking down on. And if you can do that and, and enlighten the person to bring awareness to their current condition and then say, but I have a solution for you. The first thing you got to do is I find that all the people that are really becoming uh, this victim mindset. They don't know what their passion is. They don't even understand that they have a passion or that they have a gift. We all have gifts. Just all of us don't open them. Some people just don't never open the gift. And so you have to show them, hey, you've got talents and gifts. You've got things that you're probably passionate about. If you focus on those things, you can rise above all of this. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, let's get a piece of paper out. Let's start writing down all the things you're passionate about, all the things you like, all the things you would even like to do potentially if you, if you don't know how to do it yet, because anything can be learned. And then let's analyze them in order, which are the most important or which are the highest on the list. And then from there, which do you need to learn or which are you already good at? You may already be good at something. Now, okay, let's analyze how that thing that you're good at, that gift can be utilized in the world. Let's figure out who can use it. And when we find out who can use the gift or what, what companies, what people can use that gift to enhance what they're doing, let's now research what it takes to actually put yourself in a position where you're in between those two. In other words, they're going to take your gift and utilize it for their purpose. And the side effect is going to be money in your bank account. It's going to be joy in your heart. You're going to feel like you're not even working because you love this stuff. And when we get to that level, when I can help you get to that level, now you're going to realize what I was talking about, walking in your true power, walking in passion. 
The side effect is money in your account and a life of your dreams, an abundant life where it doesn't mean you're a trillionaire, but any level that you can achieve and you're working in a passion where you feel like you're not even working, that is abundance in itself. This Conscious Conversation was created, produced, and recorded by Dr. Teresa bullard White in collaboration with Billy Carson and edited by Verse Content. The theme music was created by Tim Mountain of Evenload Productions. Quantum Minds TV is a product of the Quantum Learning Academy. 